And I'm in a guitar Let's playing mood. And now I don't get to play guitar. Or this whole podcast, Sorry. I could just be playing guitar. And you just talk by yourself. <laughs> I'll be the bard. I'll give you bardic inspiration. <laughs> Every time you start dwindling, I'll just start throwing words out. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, yes. Tanks flipping over. <laughs> Quality work, Nave. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Gaming Together, a cooperative podcast. This is a podcast where we play, review, and talk shit about video games loosely defined by the term co-op. Who defines if a game is cooperative? We do. Look at me, we do. I'm joined as always by my co-host and co-op partner, Philip. What's going on, buddy? Oh, hey, Nave. It's me, Philip, here. Did you say your name during that? Did I? I don't think you introduced yourself. Hello, I'm Nave. I don't think yeah, I did either. Go. I was just reading off of my cell phone. I'm Nave. Well, you just you said uh, my Nave. I mean, my name. Oh, but, God. Now my dog's guy. pissed. All right. Let's just continue so that I don't have to talk so you can mute this part strategically. Okay. So we are, in fact, a gaming podcast. But Nave, I wanted to see how you were doing because I saw there was another turkey update from last week. Oh my god. I wasn't even going to I wasn't planning on talking about the turkeys cuz they started to actually irritate me. But okay, so listeners, this has become a serious like like I don't want to make light of war. We I don't I don't want to date the podcast also, but we're going through like some serious world events right now, but there is a fucking turf war going on in this neighborhood, this one specific neighborhood out in the fucking woods that I deliver to where there are rival turkey clans waging war like so okay i sent philip a video there was one turkey in the road and i was like that's kind of funny you know it's a little cute and it chased me around the neighborhood right well morgan was saying that maybe that turkey would have attacked me i was like nah these turkey that turkey didn't look very vicious or anything well later on i ran into three turkeys a pack of turkeys if you will um that's or a, a, a gang what is a group of turkeys called a gaggle? Is it a murder? <laughs> a murder of turkeys? No. <laughs> um, so there were three turkeys, and I was like, okay, things are getting a little intense. Well, today, um, there were six male turkeys on one side of the street and four female turkeys on the same side. And then on the other side, there were four male turkeys, and there was serious territorial disputes going on, and I was in the middle of it. They were not happy with my <laughs> interference. They did not know what side I was choosing. I didn't know what side to choose. It was worse than a Telltale game. I was very, I was very freaked out. I thought they were going to tip my little mail truck over. How heavy do you think those turkeys are? Oh man, those they were freaky they were freakishly huge. I never realized how big turkeys were. I would say they were probably about I I'm gonna be wrong, but I'm I'm gonna guess sixty pounds. The male ones. <laughs> sixty pound turkey. They were huge. These things were not afraid of human beings. They were not being hunted to extinction, so these things were free to graze and roam. Apparently. You can hear me opening my monster because I, I'm basically addicted to these things at this point. But yeah, these these turkeys were were ferocious and i definitely think i could probably take one i would come out with some gashes i would probably have to go to the hospital and get them stitches but if i had to fight three i might lose that fight it's like in dark souls where uh, or elden ring if uh you aggro too many enemies even if they're shitty you could get whooped i think that's what would happen to me yeah i don't know how many turkeys i could take in a fight but the number would not Go past one, probably. I'm going to Google average turkey weight. I wrote average weight turkey. Okay. See if All right, so what's Google the average turkey out. weight? <laughs> 11 to 24 pounds. So I was a little off. <laughs> so on, honestly, 60 pounds for those three turkeys combined. How about that? That's what I was guessing. Okay, yeah. Okay. So it's not the Godzilla of turkeys. Yeah, just edit in me saying that it was for all three of them. Yeah, because <laughs> that would be a kaiju turkey. That would be like a a a a thirteen year old child in Turkey. Speaking of kaiju's, since we are a gaming podcast, talk about games we've been playing. Hey, Elden Ring. There's giants. There's I'm... giants. They're kind of not good. Giants. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can they're just pretty kill bad them. actually. Most they're really the cool looking. Like I really like the ones that look like they're out of Shadow of the Colossus, but everything that's huge is just also very slow. So. I mean, Elden uh, Ring's well, pretty I mean, Radom wasn't that slow. Who? Oh, well, I mean, that's a boss fight. I meant, like, 
regular enemies wise. Oh, I was talking about just just big enemies in general. Well, there are even even in the Soul series, there's a lot of bosses that are slow that are big. They just do tons of damage when they hit you. Yeah. Like, Which, I was, did you see that uh, I short know. I sent you? Short the the Twitch clip. Yeah, I think so. Remind me what it was. Old Alexander Pot Warrior or whatever his name is, oh, Warrior yeah. Pot. <laughs> Warrior Pot, yes. Yeah. Poor like boy. we got him to fight with us, and we were fighting Radom, and Radom just does his uh, intergalactic Falcon Punch right into him and just kills him instantly. Did the You're fucking like, Spirit Alexander Bomb. Pot Warrior. Yeah, it was very sad. Warrior uh, Jar. New. That's what it was. War- oh, Jar Warrior. War- Warrior Jar. That- yeah, something. Because he's a. For some reason, Elden Ring is full of warrior jars. Very unclear <laughs> why. Yeah, and Alexander is the dap- most dapper. The most dapper of them all. Um, Elden Ring, I fought the hardest fucking enemy in the whole game so far. And Wait, um, anyway. Well, so whenever you got off, I decided to explore on my own, as one does. And there is this... So, you know when you fight the, uh, the spooky skeleton boatmen... That are just kind of boat yeah. on the ground. What if boat but on ground? Um, yeah. You fight those guys, and then whenever they die, they drop something. I forget. They drop an item. That's for a side quest. Well, I ran into this dude really early on that was like, hey, I'll take you to a teleporter that takes you to this dude who wants that shit. And I was like, cool. So I've been, you know, periodically when I think about it, I go into that, I go to that guy and I give him some of those things whatever they are and he eats them and gives me ashes of war which i don't use because i don't participate in crafting i don't know why and so so i don't even know why i'm doing the side quest i just think it's fun and so eventually i'm like sitting at the bonfire like scratching my nuts or something i don't know what i'm doing i'm just standing there and then this dude just goes fucking sickle mode and just starts beating the shit out of me all right at the bonfire and i'm like what did I do? Like, why are you mad at me? I was standing here on my phone, you know, and I lost like 40,000 souls because I just don't, I just forget, you know, and honestly, that's not even enough to level up anymore, but I, I dropped my souls at the bonfire and I'm like, oh no, you know, I'm like, I think that guy's yeah. for a side quest. I don't know what I did to make him so upset at me, but I remembered this church, a church I still have yet to take to take you to. There's an NPC I want you to n- Fine, named Muriel. Actually, you probably know who that is because of the memes. Do you know Muriel? I don't think so. Fuck yeah. All right, I'm gonna, the Muriel the, whenever we get done with this recording, fuck editing and shit. I'm taking you to that fucking church. All right. But um, anyways, I go to that church because I remember there was a fountain that says uh, become cleanse I, something. Uh, what is the name? It starts with an A. Like ab- abolish. Resolved. Absolved. Yes, that's it. Okay, so yeah. it's like become absolved, and then it's like you have no agreances or whatever. I don't fucking know the Elden Ring terms. Yeah. But I was like, what? But he's mad at me. What did I – I don't even know what I did. So I Google – I typed in the first three letters of a name, which, by the way, it's like Gregory Giagog. And I'm like – I type in G-E-R, and it's like G, it's like Gregory Giagog, uh, hostile, no reason. Like it's like the third one down. And I was like, oh, people are having this problem must be a glitch and i click on it and they're like no this is actually just part of the storyline uh he just decides he's hungry and he wants to eat you you just got to give him a couple bonks on the head and he'll be all right and i'm like oh okay cool i just gotta hit him a few times motherfucker i had to hit this guy like at least 17 times (laughs) he killed me at least 15 times in a row like just in this i could not Get this guy to stop wailing on me. He was so fast, and he hit so hard. And I'm a big boy. My vigor's at 40. Philip, you don't know, but I switched my armor out. I'm not not full skelly boy anymore. I'm only half skelly boy now. Um, That guy we just killed, Radon, I went and I bought his armor from the fucking finger lady over at the round table. Because I was like, okay, I just need heavier armor. But this dude was Hold on a second, just to interrupt. So... It's like just hearing the lingo you're throwing out at this point just sounds like pure insanity. <laughs> <laughs> I might be losing my mind, but <laughs> like, okay, so you kill Gregor or you're finding Gregor and you were a skelly boy, but lucky thing we killed Radom and we took his soul and you took it to the finger lady who turned it into armor for you. So you're not as skelly boy, but go on. Yeah, we're absolutely losing. That was basically the end of the story. I wasn't planning on talking about that either. This is a good episode. I like this episode so far. Oh my god. Well, you were having problems with um, was it old bellboy Santa Claus? 
Um, the one yeah, on the bridge. That guy was a piece of shit, though. One? I haven't had, a, I haven't had yeah. problems with a single one since. All the ones that fight not dirty, that guy was fighting dirty. With his madness eyeballs or whatever that was? The stupid bastard attack with the fucking... He spits fire everywhere and a giant... It just covers the whole area. And I'm just like, I can't block it. I'm like, how do I fight what I cannot block? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Alright, well, besides Elden Ring, what have you been playing? Um, give me a, You talk about another game. Alright, well, I can break into my backlog, Bustin, as I'm clearing these games out. And I was going to work on Sonic Generations, but I picked up Lost Odyssey from my local library and started playing through that. And <clears throat> hey, that game is long. I just cleared the first disc, and I'm on disc two now out of four. And this game is longer than I remember, but very good. Uh, the Thousand Years of Dreams are very emotional. Good game so far. Can't wait to finish it. And I almost finished Sonic Generations. I'm on the last... I'm collecting the last of the Chaos Emeralds so I can uh, go kill Chaos or something. I don't know. I didn't really... I skip all the cutscenes. All right. Well, the first game I want to talk about that I've been playing is called Gangsta Paradise, which I don't know when I bought. Yeah. Well, it's literally just, you know, when you go on miniclip.com and you play those shitty Flash games at school because you're bored, but you have nothing else to do. Uh, It's literally just that. And I think I bought it for like 99 cents. And it's just your dude on the left, and there's gangsters coming, a, a quote unquote gangsters coming in on the right because they look like shitty, garbage, like, you know, mini clip characters. And all you gotta do is sh- click and shoot them, like, in a straight line. And that's the whole game. And if they get to the left, they hurt you. So I was like, this fucking sucks. And then. <laughs> nice. Two hours passed, and I was still playing this fucking game, like, listening to music. I assume you get, like, gun upgrades and stuff as you yeah, go along to make you, it more interesting. Yeah, you slowly bigger get gangsters. money, and, like, you just get, you unlock more guns, <laughs> and you get better <laughs> barricades. <laughs> but it's bad, and it's, like, I didn't realize that two hours had passed, and I was, like, ready to go to sleep. This was, like, after we were playing a World of Tanks game. I loaded this game up. It was like 10:30, and then it was like midnight 30. I do. I have to wake up at five in the morning, listeners, to go to work to beat the fucking traffic. Well, yeah, that that morning I did not feel very good, especially because I wasted on that stupid ass garbage game. It's still installed, um, because I'll probably want to play it again at some point. But uh, the other game I've been playing is Unsighted, and I'm. There, so I'm playing this game for a podcast. Um, at some point earlier, maybe like a few weeks ago, he messaged me and he's like, "Hey, I'm kind of stuck in this game. It's pissing me off. Uh, do you mind if we talk about a different game?" And then like maybe an hour passed, and he was like, "No, you know what? We'll we'll do this. We'll do this game. It's it's fine. I figured it out." And he he wants to talk about games he doesn't like, anyways. Or not that he doesn't like it, but he was getting aggravated. And I was like, wow, I wonder what happened to him. Because I'm not very far in the game, I, honestly. And so I started playing. I beat a boss, and then I explored a little bit. And I fucking, too, got stuck. And I am still oh, no. currently stuck. And since literally 15 people in the entire in the entire world have played this game, there's, like, no help on the internet. Like, you cannot Google where like i'm i know i've narrowed it down i know i need a weapon called the top or something to traverse this fucking obstacle right it's like zelda you got to get the boomerang so you can do the boomerang things to get out of the dungeon well i have no clue where this top is and no matter how i word it no matter what different phrases i use using quotation marks i'm using the fucking minus sign in front of words like i am going deep on google algorithm here i'm like digging deep into my fucking sophomore year high school computer class, learning how to fucking use search engines and shit. I'm trying desperately to find these answers that I need, and I cannot. The only thing I learned was I was like, there are rocks blocking my path. How do I blow those rocks up? <clears throat> and someone was like, yada, 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 dynamite, just saying it in passing. I'm like, where do you get dynamite? No one answers that question. So I'm like, oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> and so I roamed for like two – by the way, this game is timed. Like everyone in the game is dying while I'm like desperately searching, which is making me more frustrated. Like I'm literally – I will literally run off in one direction and find nothing and then like dashboard out and quit. 
and then go back in and run off in another i'm like literally fucking cheating now at this point just because i don't know what to do but i found a weapon blueprint i could purchase called the grenade launcher and i'm like okay cool i uh give me that grenade launcher and turns out it does blow up rocks but that's Ooh. not what I need. I went around and blew up every oh, no. fucking rock in the game, dude. I have no clue where I'm going. Well, okay, so I'm like, what the fuck do I need to do? So I, I go back into a Google spree. I'm like Googling for like 15 minutes straight. And then someone said to me, someone said in a chat, they're like, I think there's a door in the dungeon that you – the second dungeon. The dungeons are number, numbered. You can go in in any order, but they're numbered. They're like, in the second dungeon, you need a key. And you can – the keys aren't unique to the dungeons. If you get a key in dungeon 2, then go to dungeon 3 and use that key, then you no longer have a key for dungeon for, – to open up the door in dungeon 2. So I open up the yeah. map, and lo and behold, there is a fucking locked door that I can access, and I don't have a key. And I'm like, well, how do I get a key? And I'm like looking on the wiki. I, I, there's like no information anywhere. Eventually, I find a merchant. Who sells the key for nine thousand dollars? And I'm like, oh my god, how much money do I have? After buying the blueprints and the fucking materials to make the grenade launcher, I have like two thousand dollars. Also, when you die, you dark souls lose your fucking money. Yeah, you only lose, lose half money. of it, but it's still pretty fucking rough. I have like two thousand dollars, and I'm googling. I'm like, is there any way to make money cheaper? Like, can you purchase things for cheaper? Well, yes, you can. It. You can – you have this thing called Meteor Dust where if you use that, it increases your lifespan by 24 hours, or you can give it to an NPC, and uh, it increases their lifespan by 24 hours. If you give it to people, it, it increases the relationship with you, you like you know, like Stardew Valley or Dating yeah. Sims, I guess. But um, So you give the dust to the shopkeeper, and they reduce their – slash their prices. So I use four of my Meteor Dusts on this fucking NPC, and I look in the fucking thing, and it's still like $7,000. And I'm like, oh my god. Okay, I guess I have to farm. So I go out to the hardest area I know, and I start killing monsters. And each monster I kill, which almost kills me every time I'm fighting them, are giving me like – 75 to 100 dollars and i'm like oh well, you're gonna make my it. god dude and just i just stopped playing Dave. i'm i'm about to i'm a i'm so fucking upset like if i didn't have to if i didn't tell tell someone i was going to play this game i would be way done like i would have been done by the time i got to that second dungeon and went i have no idea where that top is i would have been like i'm out like, this is a cool concept, but I'm fucking bored. Like, I'm getting so bored just pushing my head against this fucking wall. If I could – like, it also would be way easier if I could just Google shit. Like, I'm Googling shit on Elden Ring that's frustrating me, and there's, like, a million people with a million different strategies to help you do anything, any tiny little minute thing in this fucking game. But not an unsighted. <laughs> like, there is no one there to help you. Like, the only way to fucking help is to watch, like – a full five, playthrough. It's like a five-hour playthrough on YouTube that has 138 views. Like, like that's the only way with no timestamps or anything. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. That felt good. That felt really cathartic. This is a good episode for me. I'm getting shit out. Whew. Well, what about I you, think Phillip? that's a good point. To uh, uh, that covers all the games I've been playing in my uh, backlog work. Uh, which you hearing you talk about Uncited makes me want to move it up in my list of games to play. Oh, the, like, game, like, the game's good. Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're good. Like, uh, hearing you talk about it, even though you're being, you were incredibly negative on some points, like, I don't know, it makes me want to play it, honestly. I don't know if I just have that weird Dark Souls thing where, yeah, I want a game to be not fun for a while. So there are multiple things contributing to this, and the main contributing factor is the timer. And to be fair, you can turn the timer off, but there is like existential like urgency when it's like in Majora's Mask. If shit starts fucking up, you know you're wasting time. Like not only do you know you're wasting your real life time, but you're also wasting this in-game valuable resource. You know, when time becomes a resource, then failure or uncertainty becomes hyper frustrating i saw we talked about that last week actually just then yeah like uh when we were you were wasting our time by being late me and Pineco <laughs> and I actually talked about games using time as a resource i remember that part i listened to it for sure i totally did all right um <laughs> that was a joke what, games, what, is, what, what games did you buy 
this is the corner that of where Nave bought games and he talks about them. I'm looking for my notes. All right, that's the jingle. Make sure you edit that in every single time. I'm not going to do that. Uh, so never winter nights, um, like remastered edition or whatever. Sorry, my fucking phone just went off. Oh, never winter was free to play. No, it's, uh, it's OG never winter nights, like remastered. Like, I think it's an Xbox original game. There is a never winter MMO. I think it's just a never winter. Okay. But, uh, this game looked cool. It reminded me kind of like, it didn't remind me of KOTOR, but like the graphics, like the era of the game reminded me of KOTOR and I've been wanting to play KOTOR. Yeah, yeah, polygons. It's the like worst textures on them. The worst looking uh, era since the Atari era, you know. But yeah, man, my allergies and my stomach are killing me today. I'm sure some of it's gonna leak through, and it's disgusting. Um, there's another game I bought called Warsaw Console Edition, and um, it looked like uh, uh Poland? no, what? Would you say Warsaw? bowling? Would you say Poland? Poland. No, I think it is about Poland. I think it's about Warsaw. But um, it looks like a uh, Darkest Dungeon. So it looks like Darkest okay. Dungeon in Poland. And so it was like on sale for like seven bucks. And I was like, fuck yeah. Just the way that it's animated and stuff. I mean, it's, it doesn't look as gritty and horrible. But I I, I expect that I would at least enjoy this because I do like tactical RPGs quite a bit. And um. I got uh, a game called This is the Zodiac Speaking. Are you even looking these up? Looking at them? No, what? Am I supposed to be looking them up? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, go look up Neverwinter Nights. Let's do a lightning round. No, I'm looking at the Zodiac thing. Yeah, This is the Zodiac Speaking. I think this is a game about astrology. I'm not sure. No, that's not what this looks like it's about. To be honest, I just bought this game because I wanted to make that joke. That bad joke. This um, looks like it's about like a Zodiac killer. It is about thing. the Zodiac killer. It looks like an a, an adventure game. Uh, it looks like a linear adventure game uh, about the Zodiac killer, and it says it's it's based on true stuff. So I'm assuming it's literally just going through the fucking going through the numbers. And I figure I could probably uh, have some friends over and play that. Have something to have have something to watch. Oh, this doesn't look funny. Yeah, it doesn't look funny, but. I mean, some people like true crime, you know what I mean? So that's, 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 that's people's bag. The only thing I do with true crime is uh, last podcast on the left, and it's only because they're funny. Like, I cannot just sit there and listen to true crime unless it's like a specific – it's like either ha- – it needs to be specifically comedic in, in purpose or it needs to be extremely analytically psychological, you know what I mean? And even then, I can't just listen to that. I have to like watch it too. Like there's this YouTube channel. I think we I've talked about this before called Jim Can't Swim. Have I I've told you about it before, haven't I? Yeah. Uh, but in case you the listeners haven't heard, Jim Can't Swim. Uh, <clears throat> it's like they're like one to three hour long videos where a a team of people like go over like murderers, serial killers, mass shooters, whatever, like horrible people. It's their interrogation videos. And they basically, the, there's a there's one narrator and he basically just points out all of these different like psychological tricks that detectives use to pinpoint like when somebody's faking being crazy, like in the Parkland shooter case, you know, where the, the kid tried to act like he saw demons and shit, but he was full of shit. He's a fucking little psychopath that deserves to die but um <laughs> God. but uh yeah it's, it's this really cool shit uh my mom i sat here and watched the whole thing with the parking shoe with my mom and uh she was just fucking screaming the whole time screaming shit that we already know but she's like he's lying and i'm like mom we know the end of the story <laughs> like come on you know what i mean but uh it's like the detectives you know they kind of like try to be your friend so that they get more information out of you and stuff like that but my mom was like you dumb motherfucker and i'm like no he's like listen for a second just let the detective do his job anyway zodiac speaking yeah shout out to mama she likes to yell just like me all right is that all your new acquired games yep just those three you're probably never gonna play right it's kind of nice because like normally we record on Sunday. So if we did record last Sunday, that means we would have only had like two days between recording sessions and I wouldn't have had anything. But the 
new sales start on Tuesday. So it's, it was weird before when we would record on Sunday and I'd talk about last week's sales. And then in two days, I'd buy more games and I just have to remember what they were by the next week. So they're kind of fresh on my mind. I literally just bought them yesterday. All right. And with that, this is our time for the Patreon segment. Once again, Pinecone's our only patron. Thanks, Pinecone. Love you, Morgan. Yeah, he's playing uh, Kirby right now. Go check him out. It looks fucking fun. I live vicariously through him for I no longer have yeah, a Switch. Yeah, you don't have a Switch. Because he was like, hey guys, you know, uh, Kirby's co-op. Is that ever going to be a featured <laughs> episode? And I was like, you know, I would love to do a co-op Kirby episode. But then again, I don't want to spend $60 on just a game for the pod when we don't have that many patrons. Combined <laughs> with Nave doesn't even have a Switch. Yeah. I'm going to have to emulate it on my Xbox. Yeah, because you can do it on PC. Yeah, well, because oh, my P, I don't have a PC either. Man, my life is falling to shambles. Speaking of falling to shambles, uh, so I so I showed you this cut on my wrist, but I got ganked by a really rusty, sharp mailbox a few days ago, right on my wrist, right where it bends. It goes from like the, you know, like we, you have the lines on your wrist where it bends, from that up into my palm. So it's like impossible to heal. It just keeps getting reopened. It's awful. And you weren't we wearing your mail gloves. I, there's no male gloves you know how hard it is to handle male with gloves even if it's like oh, no. negative even if it's like i was gonna say negative but even if it's like 10 degrees outside and it's freezing and sleeting and shit i don't wear gloves because i can't i can't tell if i have the mail in my hands or not and if that mail falls you know, into the sludge i'm screaming <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine that what's the thing um the workers rights groups unions you have to pay dues the union yeah like the union doesn't make you wear gloves or anything no the union doesn't really you have your proper I, mean, I don't know i might be saying shit now but i mean i don't think the union really does makes you do anything really <laughs> i don't know i honestly have no idea i'm so disconnected from my job it's insane but um you don't even know yeah. what goes on there Look well so i have a facebook account that i don't use and you know facebook bought instagram or meta which owns Facebook, bought Instagram. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there either. But um, so I do occasionally use Instagram. I like to just upgrade, upload photos, upgrade my Instagram account with more pretty photos. And so I put a I picture see. of my uh, my cut wrist on there without thinking about it. I was like, I got hurt. And um, I put another picture on, uh, it's from uh, this anime I've been slowly getting through called Space Dandy. There's an episode where he, they, he goes in a bunch of parallel universe space dandies get in his universe. <laughs> like he pulls them into his universe. And so there's a bunch of different kinds. There's like a Gundam wing kind and a speed racer kind. And there's like a depressed emo space dandy. And he's just always got this sad look on his face. And he's and one of his lines is, I just want to die. <laughs> and I made it to where it looks like I'm, it's looking at the picture. <laughs> like you have to swipe right to get that. Well, anyway – that was that was the the post is my my little boo boo on my wrist and that I, that I want to die picture. It, so Instagram, if you're linked to your Facebook, which apparently mine is, it just posts your pictures to Facebook. So apparently every <laughs> oh, single no. time, yeah, you they see where won. this is going already. So yeah. like yeah, so everything I post on Instagram, it just goes to Facebook. I didn't even know that, but I don't I don't really care honestly. But my fucking. <laughs> My messenger app blew up with like 20 boomers asking me if I needed to talk or if I was okay. <laughs> and I was just like, what in the fuck is going on? Like, what happened? Did so honestly, I, last time that happened, this is actually kind of sad. Last time that happened, my cousin committed suicide and his birthday's tomorrow. That's what makes it extra sad for me. <laughs> but I was thinking about him a lot today. But uh, so I thought something bad happened. And once I started communicating with some of them, they were asking me if I needed to like call somebody. I'm like, what in the fuck is going? Like, it, I don't know if this is what's happening. Because you know, on Facebook, that kind of message, that kind of news, just spreads super fast. But I, don't know, I totally just derailed the fucking vibe of the podcast. But and yeah, I, should, really I need to pay this anymore. I need to pay. I'll, it was a funny story until I brought that up. Let's go. Let's go along with the fucking music. And with that, Nave, is there a Twitter? We have a Twitter. I didn't. Th I didn't know we were uh, recording today, so I did not post anything. Bummer. Oh, Philip, how about this? Uh, oh. So retrospective replay is doing a weird episode of something, but he, they, he, he, they asked if uh, you had a top three PlayStation One games. Oh, easy. 
because Easy. my only time playing, yeah, my only time playing a PlayStation One was whenever I was a young tyke. Well, like, asterisk, you can you can pick games that are on the PlayStation One that have released now. Like you can retroactively pick Crash Bandicoot, even if you only played the Insane Trilogy and stuff. That kind of has been discussed. Like, so there are people who never played the PlayStation One and only played like the PS One Classic, like the little plug and play mm, machine. I see what you mean. Yeah, so All right. that's, well, that's a lot as well. I'm going to go over uh, games that I played that were on the PS1 that I know for sure. And whenever I had like pneumonia and I was in the hospital as a little kid, they wheeled in a, like a little PlayStation 1 and plugged into the TV for me so I could game. Very nice of the hospital. And they had a Rugrats game, which was a Mario Party Rugrats. Wait, and pause. I remember being... Did what? you have one of those things in your hand? Yeah, an IV. Like a snabby thing? Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. How did you... What did you play? I, I don't think... Uh, anyway, I don't even know okay, why I brought well, it up. No, that's just it. It's like uh, they didn't have DualShock controllers. So it was just the... It was just like uh, the normal PlayStation without the joysticks, you know? Yeah. It looked like yeah. a fucking uh, so, SNES p controller with handles. Yeah, grippies. it was old school. And so they had like this Rugrats game, which was terrible. That was like based on Mario Party. They had Spyro the Dragon, I think. I think it was one of the first Spyros. Is that on PlayStation 1? Yeah. Or am I crazy? No, it yeah. is on PlayStation 1 for sure. Yeah, so it was like probably like Spyro 1. And they did not have a memory card, by the way, so I just restarted every time. And I think they might have had a Shrek game. I'm not 100% on that. <laughs> but I remember it was pretty awesome. I'm almost 1,000% sure that I played that Rugrats game that you're talking about on the Nintendo 64. Really? Yeah, sounds... and I loved it. I did not yeah. think it was bad. <laughs> I was like fucking. Lo I was playing it by myself, just fucking like yeah, playing against the NPCs. But those three, those three games specifically. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the three: the Rugrats game, possibly Shrek, and Spyro one. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> so Spyro, Rugrats game, and Shrek. I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah. know if that game is real. Can you guess? Let me look. Let me look. You've got five guesses to get two of two of my top three. I oh, I'm telling I'm telling you it's it's easier than you think. All right, uh, yeah, to have a metal. Yeah, Shrek was on PlayStation One. Um, God, Shrek is old. See. Holy fuck. Yeah, I know. I just want you to know I did not go obscure. No, I haven't even Crash played Metal Gear Solid. No, oh, that's no. a good guess. Two uh, for zero for two now. Oof. Okay, what other games are on there? Uh, Gex. Maybe? No, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to think about <laughs> me more. <laughs> okay, Tony Hawk. They're definitely a Tony Hawk game. I'll give that to you. T Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Maybe Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> you is that PlayStation Two? I, I no, it is. It is on PlayStation One. But I almost put that. Okay. Uh, oof. Uh, it was Jet Set Radio PlayStation Two or One, maybe. I think Jet Set Radio is on PlayStation One. I I put Resident Evil Two and Final Fantasy Eight. You were you oh, were you were, going, you were going way obscure. I was like, as oh, soon as you I got Tony Hawk, Final Fantasies too. You said Tony Hawk, and I was like, oh, he's on the right track. And then you just went right back into obscurity. I was like. For Rapper the Rapper, I almost I was, picked. Those are big titles. <laughs> Is it? I, per, was Parappa the Rapper even in the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale? You can't use that as a defining factor. <laughs> but if he was, the, if he was an All-Star Battle Royale character, then you... Hold on. We're not a Sony podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, I have a PlayStation 4, but I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. Bring back Parappa the Rapper. He was a playable character in PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. Oh, look at that! Smash Bros. of PlayStation. Where's the Smash Bros. of Xbox? With no, they have it. It's the um, Blizzard and shit. It's uh, what's it called? Uh, well, there's the Nickelodeon one that's on Xbox. Well, was, Let's see. Uh, were you gonna say Master, Killer Instinct? Master has been. Uh, well, yeah, Killer Instinct is. I think we've had Xbox this conversation one. before. Because I remember oh, you saying there was Master Chief in a fighting game, and then I go, dead or alive it was four. Dead or Alive, yeah. and it wasn't Master Chief, it was Nicole. It was just a Whatever. generic Spartan, because they made it female, I don't know why. Just for fun, I guess. There are okay. of, plenty of female Spartans, but they picked a random one. All right, yeah. Hopefully, I remember. I was going to. Well, that was the Twitter. That was it. I was going okay. to. I was going to put them down, but then was it Shrek for real? Was Shrek for real? Yeah, Shrek was real. That was a real game. It was just called Shrek. Oh man, let me Philip look. Philip says Spyro <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> what was the other one? <laughs> Rugrats. Look up that. Yeah, it was just called Shrek. I typed in Rugrats and it autocorrected to regret. <laughs> uh edit this okay. down to be more more for brevity because there's a lot of goof happening right now.
Uh, let's see. There's Rugrats sh- Search for Reptar. Look for the that one seems that to looks be the like only one. Search for Reptar. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no one else is gonna say that. Reptar. <laughs> okay, we did it. <laughs> Fucking make the music play. And we're back. Bum, we're, bum, the, bum, the, bum, the vibe bum. is back. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, we're back. Whatever. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, I don't even know if we're taking a break at this point. So, Nave, World of War Tanks, or no, World World of Tanks. World yeah, of Warships it. and World of Tanks. For, yeah, World Will this of be by the same guys? Um, Wargaming.net, I think. Yeah, Wargaming. Yeah, Wargaming was the developer and the publisher for War Tanks. No, Tank. World of War. War of World <laughs> Tanks. <laughs> War of the Worlds tanks. <laughs> anyway. Battle tanks. Whatever. So they're from Belarus. Oh my god. Have you played that What's Nintendo that? 64 game by 3DO with the tanks? Fuck. You're talking about battle tanks? Is that what it's called? Yes. I even have a full playthrough on my old YouTube channel of me playing that game. Are you serious? And you never told yeah. me? No. Why would I tell Dude, you Dude, that game was... I used to think that shit was so cool. It was a really good game. It was mostly because when you started up, it would go 3D. Well, <clears throat> hold on. My fucking voice started cracking. I'd be like, 3DO, 3DO. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, that is so fucking kick ass. <laughs> Chills. Yeah. That game was cool. No, I think that game's like co op too. Are uh, you like, serious? If we, yeah. Maybe if uh, you get a PC, we can set up a, um, oh, what's it called? Pascal Rascal. Dude. Nah, bro. We're gonna That's fucking. A... What is that thing that you did? We did for Bubble Bobble. We're gonna do that through That's my phone, saying. and yeah. I'm gonna Bluetooth Parkour. my controller to my phone. Oh no! <laughs> <Well, laughs> <laughs> we've had harder setups. Yeah. Anyway, what are we talking about? So, uh, World of War Tanks. War Tanks. War. Uh, yeah, starring Tom this Cruise. Was originally released back in 2010. That was a long time ago, Nave. Oh yeah. Nave, what is your history with the the tanks? series well as with most games that uh i started playing on pc i was bullied into it by william and this one i didn't i wasn't for sure well william has a way to get us all to play something and sometimes we it kind of sticks and this was one of those games that i thought was going to stick and then just ended up not sticking for most of us i wanted to continue playing this game because this game's actually kind of like addicting so yeah, that's that's basically my my introduction was through William. Well, no, my introduction was also through William, but I think my problem was I didn't commit enough time to it because oh, we had friends man. like Defcon and them and Shadow who either they had premium tanks or they were so much tiered above us that I was playing with tier three most of the time and didn't even make it to like tier four because it used to be a lot harder to make it out of the lower tiers. Like when we started playing this. I made it to tier four in like a day. Whereas in the old days, you would have to climb through tier one, tier two, tier three, like all the way up. And it just gets exponentially harder with every tier of tanks. Yeah, that uh might be that might be foreshadowing, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> for the for the a future topic that we're gonna have. Now that we covered our early experience, it is now twelve years later and we pick the game back up again to review on this pod this very day. So Nave. This game has a lot of tanks in it. Oh, yeah. So many tanks. So many tanks and that they, they come... have to separate them into Cold War era and World War II era. Yeah. And there's even like different kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, there's tank tiers, which go through like 1 through 12 or something like that. And it usually goes like old to modern tanks because tier I think it's 12 one to is 10. Just... Is, it 10? Ten, is, is, is 12 it? really the fucking... Does it go to 12? I would fucking shit myself. I don't know. I'd have to look. I think it's... I'm that pretty sure so it's high. 10. I'm almost a but, million percent. Maybe in Cold War it's 12, but... Which I don't even understand how that would work, but... Because the Cold War is such a smaller era, of, but it's like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it just goes up to 10. But you have these different... These 10 different tiers. You have, like, 8 different countries, maybe, or so? I think there's... Of different, like... There's more, got? but a, a handful of them only have, like, a few lines. Like Japan, China, they only have a few lines. No, China's huge. China and Japan are pretty big. What? Like our, the biggest ones. Yeah, the biggest ones are definitely like US, of course. UK, Russia, Germany. The small ones are like maybe Spain. There's Finland, Sweden, France, China. There's so many countries. China's, China's not big either. China's got like two or three lines. 
Like you're you're don't lump China in with like America because America has like three lines of medium tanks and Germany has like three lines of tank destroyers. That's China has three lines altogether. And a lot of them okay. are just tanks from, mean, other line, yeah. from other lines from other countries like some of them are just the same tank except there's like a, a few things that are different about it and so there's it's like a, a made in china sticker on the side yeah it's like it's like the is is in the fucking russian tier i think and then on china you have the is2 which is like a tier seven rent but it's the same fucking tank so it's just getting blown the fuck up in tier seven matches i speak from experience all right so you mentioned tank destroyers in each like Did tier I? there Oh yeah, yeah you mentioned tank destroyers. So there's different classes of tanks. We have our small, medium, large tank destroyers and SPs or SPAs or SPGs. Well, I don't know what they call them. It's 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 light, medium, and heavy. <laughs> no, it's, this is not McDonald's where you get the large tank. <laughs> Whatever. Can I get the large? Yeah. I, uh, so Phillips giving like what is that artillery? I call them artilleries. I've I've always called them artilleries. What is it that you're calling them again? Um, they call they call them in the game. It's either like SPG or SPA, which is like self-propelled gun or self-propelled artillery. That's probably that sounds. I mean, that sounds. I'm not saying you're wrong, but because I I barely read anything in this fucking game. Usually, I'm just listening to music and vibing when I'm playing this game. You honestly I, don't have to read much in this game. <laughs> There's not a lot. Just look on you the could pictures. Be big dumb dumb. <laughs> you, <laughs> anyway, okay. So just a real, we'll go through the quick kind of like gameplay aspect. Just capture it's 15, there's but 15. a video game version of it. <laughs> yeah, be like, click on tank. Yeah, where, so, where, which images have a tank in it? <laughs> That's fucking playing World of Tanks. You know, it's funny you say that. Have you seen the AI that is supposed to be able to identify tanks? This is like a famous AI or whatever, what? like through camouflage, it's supposed to be able to spot tanks. No. But the problem with the the training images, they like fed it. Most of the pictures they gave of the tanks were during the evening. And so it was able to basically tell you if it was morning or evening. <laughs> what, that's what they ended up training the AI to do instead of spot tanks. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> this is, <laughs> if you fucking listen to Dungeons and Daddies, I was about to talk about a thing. <laughs> it's, like, it's not funny because it's not even funny, but it's like that's exactly a skit from an improv group that they talk about. They were like, that was a reference for absolutely nobody. And then they had to explain the reference where, like, it's like they make a robot that can smell everything, but they forget they it <laughs> okay. only has two levers. That is it. The lever is cheese or petrol. And so everything <laughs> it smells either says it's cheese or petrol. <laughs> I don't It's so it's so stupid. I don't know. The robot's going to take over in the future. It's clear. Yeah. The scary. He's got to train them good enough. It's crazy how mu how hard it is to make AI see like how much we take for granted our fucking brain's capability of like analyzing our environment like as fast as it does because it's like like a few years ago I think some people I think I'm making I might be making this up but I think people got arrested because they were training self driving cars in an area and they slapped like pink stickers or pink duct tape on stop signs and then the car the it it didn't e not a, not even a lot just like a a foot long yeah. strip across like a random spot in the stop sign and then the ai would not recognize the stop sign and it would just run the fucking oh, the no. intersection and i was like oh my god that's so fucking frustratingly scary because i want this shit to work you know what i mean but like that is horrifying but then yeah. again um there's a there's a youtube channel called cp gray cpg gray i don't know what his name is i don't like saying the letters c and p together either but um this channel is like a uh it's like just video essays and stuff, and he's a really cool guy. He's got an awesome voice. Occasionally, he does like self-driving car stuff. He like did the most dangerous mountain road in a Tesla, like all the way from one. It's like the Dragon's Tail or something like that. And he did it in his dad's Tesla uh, from there and back. Like he did went both ways without touching the wheel once. So that's pretty cool. And he didn't die. So yeah, I mean they're working on it. Yeah. So I mean, at least there's that. It's getting better. Well, back to tank game. So you have your five different types of tanks. Your small ones primarily use the scouts. Uh, they just run in and die. They go really fast, though. They're basically just jeeps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, okay, back to... We should explain the game type more better. So it's 15 versus 15. You guys get dropped in. And in a world where only tanks exist, 
it's a first person shooter for tanks. If you can't run and jump, all you got is treads. You're just treading it. And you navigate around different little battlefields. Uh, you have your scout scope and spot. And if a teammate spots a unit, that unit is spotted spotted for the whole team. So no, it's spotted yeah. for people within radio within radio range. Oh yeah, but I think they can bounce radio to teammates as you go along, right? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. Well, it's, how do the SPs be able to see so far in the back? They have huge radio range. <laughs> that's know, that that's might the be a thing. thing. Yeah, sky. I think light tanks also have huge radio range. I think that's yeah. like the relationship. Also, you said you can't jump. Even though you can't jump in this game, you can in fact goomba stomp people <laughs> at least you can try the tank physics are rough sometimes when you get going like high speeds i say high speeds you're going like 30 kilometer kilometers an hour which oh, is that, pretty fast for a tank that's generous at the at the low tiers <laughs> like that is a fast well, that's the tank. speed i usually go yeah yeah but the light tanks they are going so fast those little ones like there's some even that just have wheels and they just fly down the road yeah, there's some when you get into like tier five and six, like there are some scout tanks that literally look like RC cars compared to all the tanks around them. Like they're so tiny, they look like clown in cars. Is, in the medium, the happy medium between light and heavy. Yeah. There's not much to say about them. That's where the M3, A4, E8 Sherman tank comes in. I might have fucked that up. Whatever. And then we have heavies. These are like, these are the Halo. Tanks we don't have you... anything to say about the mediums. Yeah, tank beats everything. What am I going to say about medium? Medium's tight, dude. Mediums have like uh, no. the most reliable penetration usually. Besides, like until you get to tank destroyers, we'll get to that later. But like mediums have pretty good penetration, low da usually low damage. Like I don't know if any medium tanks get derp guns, but uh, with a derp gun is like, imagine a normal gun barrel, and then a derp gun is a Pringles can. <laughs> Like that's what, you just make bullet bigger. That's what they fucking made these some of the guns on these tanks. But yeah, those those tanks are usually pretty good uh, because with the less armor, they're usually more angular as well. So it's like there's more of a chance for a ricochet rather than just straight on fucking full throttle, hardcore deep penetration. There's not a whole lot of that. Actually, there's right. a whole lot of that. I don't know why I'm hyping them up so much. But heavy tanks, these are the ones that are tall enough to like actually see over hedges and stuff like that. They can actually like shoot over some walls because so many of the tanks are kind of short. But the heavy tanks, these are like big, big tanks. Makes them easy to hit with artillery. Makes them poke out of like, you know, buildings a lot. But these are yeah. like the the meaty boys. Yeah, these are the ones that everyone's scared of. Like you usually want to, you know that Tom and Jerry meme where uh, uh, Tom, Tom's the cat, right? I'm freaking out. Yeah. Uh, Tom is like point at the door, open door, pointing, and there's the cops, the cop cats that are standing there. Yeah. He's like pointing at Jerry. Yeah, that's that's uh the medium tank pointing at Big Daddy, uh, tank destroyer. Whenever the me the heavy tanks get there, my fucking analogy is falling apart because I can't get my words out. Well, heavy tanks are usually more armored as well, so they can actually like bounce off a lot of the light tank hits. They can tank hits. Oh yeah. Surprisingly. They are the tanks of World of Tanks. Um, they are also they can also be incredible DPS machines. Like I was saying before, with I mean I don't know if they still call it this, but uh, colloquially they, they at least like five years ago they would call these guns the derp guns. And so either you either had a tank destroyer or you had a heavy tank because these are he, these are really big cannons with really heavy rounds. And since you already were riding a heavy tank, then odds are you might have a derp gun in your arsenal. These Tanks you can upgrade and swap parts in and out whenever you level them up in this game. But these derp guns are usually low penetration, high damage. So it's like if the bullet gets through, it is probably going to kill every poor motherfucker inside that metal coffin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. With that, we go into the way you stop a lot of heavy tanks, and that is with the tank destroyer, which is... Oh, baby. He's like, I, I like to think of it as like the sniper of tanks, yes. which just seems like such a weird warfare going on all of a sudden, because like <laughs> it is, they try so hard to be almost like historically accurate, but then again, it feels like an arcadey tank first person shooter half the time where you guys just get, just get dropped in there, like go get the enemy team and you have your light tank scouting the head. You have your mediums pulling them up and then heavy tanks coming up in the rear. Then you have your snipers in the grass tank destroyers who their whole thing is most of them don't have a true turret on their tank, meaning they can't they can't aim behind them. They only aim forward. 
And so they just have to sit there, aim forward. They're usually super accurate compared to the, their turret cousins. And yeah. they can just penetrate right through anything they shoot. Yeah, so these tanks are the light. They, these tanks are lighter. They're not the lightest class of tank, but they are lighter than the light tanks, uh, which usually ma- which makes them very vulnerable. Which is nice because they're in the back line. But these tanks uh, also have v- usually have very uh, small caliber rounds to help with their penetration. Like I said, they can also have derp guns. Like there is a very popular German uh, tank destroyer called the Hetzer, which is kind of a meme. Uh, in tier four because it's such a good tank um because it's very small very angular and it comes with a derp gun so it's like everything you could possibly want why would you ever upgrade to the next gun or an upgrade to the next tank but these tanks uh they you mentioned hiding in the grass that's an actual mechanic in the game this is a good time to bring that up because tank destroyers are the ones that use this the most um you can hide behind bushes and it obscures vision and most tanks, whenever you fire and you're not in line of, and you're not in the line of sight, you haven't been spotted yet. It will reveal you, like especially if you're out in the open. Even if you, cause, because you can look into a field and see nothing, but there could be tanks there because your tanks. There could be because, tanks. <clears throat> because your camera can see that field, but your people inside of the tank cannot see that field. That's like essentially what the game's logic is, right? Because you can't this there's it's not a glass it's not glass walls all the way around. Like you're in a metal sarcophagus, like I was saying. There are only so many different ways you can look. Well, whenever you're revealed, um, like Philip was saying before, all of the, everyone within radio distance of the person that saw that tank uh is now able to see that tank, essentially. They just triangulate the location. Well, these tank destroyers, if you hide in bushes, if you hide behind bushes, they are like infinitely less likely to be revealed, which makes them the squishiest of – or almost basically the squishiest tanks, but also – I don't know what I'm trying to say. That's the end of my sentence, <laughs> but also. Yeah, I mean, tank destroyers are good. They're probably uh, – they're definitely one of my favorite things to play. But before we started getting into our, our preferred gameplay methods, let's move on to our final tier. The probably uh, like I checked the uh, war tanks, tanks, the World of War tanks uh, Reddit just God, to see Philip. what the general. <laughs> I can't say it for some reason. Just to see what the fan base was kind of like memeing about, what they were joking about, and there was a large collection of anti-artillery memes of just people being like. Hey, uh, like there's the family guy one or whatever. He's like, Hey, do these people go to hell? And they're like, no. And he's like, what about people that main SPs? And they're like, Oh yeah, straight to hell all the way down. <laughs> I fucking them hate them, dude. Cause I, I dislike playing them, which makes getting killed by them so much more aggravating. I'm like, not only did I just get fucking one shot by a fucking artillery, but they're playing such a boring fucking tank. <laughs> they fucking are. How could they possibly be having fun right now? They just ruined okay, my it's fun. It's interesting you say that. Okay. Well, <laughs> Uh, real quick before we get into the details, uh, the only thing different about SPs is that they have terrible armor. They are usually the worst shapes. They get penetrated, blown up on every hit. They never bounce around. Like when we say penetration, this game has a a mechanic. I forgot what it was called exactly. Like it was just armor slant or angle or something like that. Uh, angled where, armor, but um, angled it's armor. Uh, yeah. ricochet. It's shots ricochet, ricochet off of that's armor. It. Yeah, so depending on where your armor is on your tank, it has different ricochet values from where they hit you from. And tanks like the Hetzer is perfectly domed on the top. So there's almost like no place to shoot the Hetzer. That's a dead-on hit unless you hit them like in the tracks or directly in the butt or the front. Any other side you're going to hit them from, it's just going to go, ting, and be like, oh, it bounced just off. Them. <laughs> yeah, and then like you're in the Hetzer and you just... You just see this bullet fly in from outer space, hit the side of your tank, fly off, and explode in the distance. And you're like, ooh, that would have hurt. And it's then like, you just keep on trucking. It's like fucking Piccolo deflecting a key blast. <laughs> that's exactly it. Like the meme of uh, Piccolo like slapping the laser out of the way. Like that's yeah. it. <laughs> just ding so, Which you, yeah, before okay. you used to have to like fucking know where to shoot tanks. But it's really convenient now because... Uh, your aiming reticle changes color. The deeper red it gets, the more likely your bullet's going to penetrate. Because you have to take into account... I mean, you don't any, anymore. Like, the game does it for you. But the game is taken into account 
not only the uh, the angle slant of the armor, but the thickness of the armor in the spot. And the game also, the, every tank also has its own weak points. Like, every tank has a place where it's storing fuel, a place where it's storing ammunition, and it, it, it's keeping track of where all of the crew members are, which can die. If you penetrate right where the uh, person loading the ammunition is, and you, you can possibly kill that guy and cause the tank that you just shot to reload slower because you know air quotes somebody else has to do that guy's job right like like a spotter is gonna have yeah. to go reload the you know it's really interesting i don't know what i'm talking i don't know where that came from but oh well, we were just talking about basically all the behind the scenes math that goes into every shot before we get too into the nitty-gritty let's stay on the outside and just be like hey what's your preferred gameplay what, what's your favorite tank type to play as Anyone that's been watching our Elden Ring gameplay uh, can probably guess, but I like to be the big, thick, chonky boys. I'll play a medium tank every now and then. I was hyping them up earlier because the American Sherman, fuck, it's such a good tank. I'm about to get the other American tank. There are two tiers, uh, I think tier six, there are two tier five or six American Shermans. And I don't know what the fucking variate difference is, but uh, I'm about to buy the other one. Just so that I could have two Tur Shermans in the same tier, just so I could bounce between them. It, they're so fun. But yeah, uh, I like to be heavy. I'm heavy yeah, weapons um, guy. Which, I don't know, plays right into my likes. Um, I'd say my second favorite is definitely the tank destroyers. I really enjoyed, of course, the Hetzer. Uh, standing back, you go in there and you're just like out there tanking them, blocking those hits. And I can just be like, pew, and just shoot across the map and snipe someone. But that leads to my real favorite, and that's the artilleries. Definitely an Son artillery. Of a bitch. <laughs> it's just it feels so good because I talk about like sniping across the map as a tank destroyer, but to snipe all the way across the map as an artillery, and like you have all your little like gauges where it's like, hey, it's gonna hit somewhere in this zone at this point. Like you're like zooming in and aiming, and you're better correcting your aim. And you're like, there's a timer that says it's gonna take 2.8 seconds. For the round to land, it is so far away. It's, <laughs> so you have to so like better calculate two seconds of yeah. time. I need two seconds of lag at this point, and then I just see Nave out there just tanking shots, and I'm like, I got you, Nave. Hold on, it's like scope in, tick, 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 fire. You just wait like one, two, and then a tank just goes shoom, and explodes. Because usually the armor's not that strong on the top of the tank, or Mostly you know the what's sides more the likely to side. happen. Uh, you go one, two, and then as you say two, the tank just starts moving, and you're like, no! And then you just oh, completely miss. <laughs> That's what the game okay. is like. <laughs> some of the some games are like that, but then there's other games where I'll get five kills in a row, just just dropping shots like warheads on foreheads right on top of these tanks, blowing them all to pieces. <laughs> That's, I'm just like, wow, good, this game is easy. That's a good phrase for the artillery. <laughs> warheads on foreheads maybe that's the name of the title of the episode <laughs> it's a pretty good right. one. uh we, you meant you dropped a couple of tank names of your favorite tanks uh like right now i've been playing with the birch gun a lot which is a british artillery unit and it's just good it's accurate it reload the reload time is like six seconds which is fast for artillery it's usually yeah. they're like giant rounds. You're dead and, out on out on the streets though <laughs> with the six second reload time. There are heavy tanks yeah. with that time, but I mean it's scary. So what what's your uh, kind of like favorite tank right now? And you were talking about the um, the Shermans. Shermans are great. Hetzer is also really good, but I mean like you you don't want to stay on tier four forever. But like um especially because the tank after the Hetzer's fucking dog shit compared to the Hetzer. Um the KV one is really fucking fun. Uh, in the Soviet tier, I think that's the heavy, is the KV-1. Um, maybe it's tier 5 or tier 6. I can't remember. The, so here's the issue. I guess, well, I did just name a few tanks. If you want, we could get into this story. this Or not the story, of, but the situation we had when we were playing together, which was just like when Philip played with William and Defcon and them, them being, they played way more than him, so he was always lagged behind. We all saw that situation because I played a shit ton of this game uh, on the Xbox. I played a fucking lot of it whenever it got released on the Xbox One. Every time, like, Xbox Game Pass would give us a reward that gave me another tank in a couple days of premium, day, premium, I would start playing World of Tanks again. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm playing World of Tanks for another week. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, why not? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. 
And it's fun. So now I have literally like 29, 30 tanks in my garage. I have so many. And over half of those are tier sixes or tier fives. Phillip's obviously running in the low end of tier three. So he had to play. He played for like a day and a half just to try and get to level fours, which was kind of unsuccessful for most for the most part. So I just I had like three empty slots in my garage. I was just like, I'm just going to buy a couple tier threes. And then somehow. Well, I know why. It's because you were playing a variety of tanks and I was only playing those three tanks. But I got to level four before you got to level four. And I was just like, God damn it, I'm going to buy another tier three tank. <laughs> and then you finally <laughs> got to tier four with two of them. But it was like, yeah, we were so out of sync. And you did have premium tanks to play, but it's not like you can progress with those tanks. So that was our main yeah. issue. Uh, so with that, you're definitely limited on playing... Okay, I don't know how to describe this. The way the matchmaking system works is behind the scenes, they decide what a tank is worth. So you can jump into a game and fight against tanks that are somehow two tiers above you. And this isn't like League of Legends where it's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm level five and I'm gonna fight a level six champ or something like that. This is like you're a level five fighting a level ten champ. The tiers can have a <clears throat> lot of space between them depending on the tank. Well, the way that I would put it more is I would say it's not like if you're playing bronze and you're fighting a silver. It's like you're playing a bronze and you're fighting a diamond just going up one tier like it is a sig it, there can be a sig a jarring difference in tank for in uh tank quality like especially with the type of rounds that they use like the guns get the guns get w hit start hitting way harder the engines are pushing the tanks way faster like you are at a significant disadvantage for a lot of matches where you end up with you, I, you'll be like tier five and you're fighting tier sevens and you're and i'm just like oh no I'm in a heavy tier five, but I might as well be in a scout tank right now. Like that's how much stronger Just those tier sevens are. Bigger target scout tank. Yeah, a bigger target, slower scout tank. So I'm just completely useless. So does this feel balanced to you, or do you like this kind of balance? Um, I don't like it, but unfortunately, I think a a big reason for that is because of the low player volume. Um, I think so. There. are there's not nearly as many people that used to play this game that are playing now because i mean the game is so old you can it's something to be expected but and it's very niche as well but one thing that works in its favor which we haven't talked about it's a good segue good segger in the business philip calls it oh my god um, almost sounds like a slur <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um uh what was i even fucking saying as soon as i thought of that had, had that thought um the matchmaking system and the lobby system in this game are pretty unique to this type of game where if you die you're permanently dead in the match which means you're not f you you aren't forced to sit there and wait you can leave the lobby and then immediately join another game which i can hear you saying but nave fortnite does that well this game came out in 2010 and it's always been like this i'm sorry molly i just freaked her the fuck out but i slammed down on my on my couch and scared her um, yes, this game allows you to just leave and just hop into your garage, grab another tank, and take off into another match. So you can literally – this is something that people do in the game. Actually, it's a strategy called sewer scouting, William's favorite fucking strategy, where you literally get a, your fastest scout. You drive right down the middle of the map as fast as you can with no <laughs> intention of anything else but dying. And the because the, the reason is is that you're going to spot – like. 15, 20 tanks on the way through. You're going to spot a bunch of enemy tanks. They may not be able to do anything about it because no one's close enough to fucking help you. But yeah, you'll you'll get a bunch of experience for spotting. And this is it probably, it, I'm assuring you, it's probably been nerfed. It's not nearly as much experience as it used to be like six or seven years ago. But William used to love doing that and then sitting there pressuring us to die so that we could join another <laughs> game. Well, do you not think that makes like it almost gives an incentive for people to not always try their hardest in each match if you're able to just quit out when you lose? Like, where's the commitment? If if it's over, I just move on, you know? Well, the main thing is that uh, every single tank gets a win of the day. You get double experience on that tank towards progressing, leveling it up. Um so you want to tr – whenever you have that double experience, you want to try as hard as humanly possible because the better you do – 
the more experience you're going to get because if you get z if you do get zero kills die instantly and flop out of the fucking match then you get fucking nothing for your double experience the caveat to that is that you have to win the match it's a win of the day double experience boost so yeah. if you multiply that double experience boost by how many tanks do you think you have like seven or eight yeah i got a lot yeah, well, I mean, you got an hour of gameplay right there just getting those double experience boosts, essentially. I have, like, 30 tanks. That's an all-day fucking ordeal if I want to try and get all of those, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Just trying and to get those wins. Not all of those games are going to be bangers, you know? Like, we had an entire day that we played this game, and we were just fucking losing. <laughs> like, yeah, we were it was, like, dying. six matches in a row without winning a game. And that was, like, without getting a, a hit on a tank that actually penetrated. It was just, like, we would just ding them. Or they would just track them, and then I get one XP from the whole match, and then we'd lose. And I'm like, well, that was a fun um, nine minutes of my life gone, you know? <laughs> I, I would love it because I would just I would stay alive for so long, not kill anyone, maybe do one pin, and pin on somebody, and, and then they would die from some other means. And then I would die, and I'd just be like, all of that time. <laughs> like, and I just shot one person. <laughs> this is why I don't like Battle Royales, is you know the the whole playing the for like so long and not seeing a single person and then just getting blowed up from an artillery the only difference is that these games are way shorter than battle royales these games like you said i mean nine minutes that's that's a that's like ha over half of the match that you sat in that match but sometimes you can die really early like within a minute and a half of the match like some of so, like people have to die early right so sometimes that's you oh, yeah but, you know, again, if you're playing on a Series X, I can't remember what it's like on the Xbox One, but on the Series X, the loading time is nothing. So the time it takes to get back to the garage and then into the fucking next lobby, super small. Unfortunately, since this is a multiplayer-only game, you have to wait for everyone to connect so it doesn't fucking matter how good your system is. <laughs> you're still sitting there waiting. And also, this game is cross-play, so you're going to be seeing a lot of PC users. And the game does make you aware of the uh, uh, if they're on the pc platform but honestly i don't know if they get a i don't know if they get any benefit from it because this game's a little bit different from most first person shooters yeah well i mean you have to wait on your turret to move so it's not even like you can do like twitch shooting or accuracy like even if you turn your sensitivity on your mouse up you don't gain any technical or not technical mechanical benefit <laughs> Yeah, and, and as well, if your turret is moving or if your tank is moving, you get a reduced accuracy on your shots, and it makes your uh, hit reticle a lot bigger. This is most noticeable right. on uh, artillery, but uh, it, it's still pretty bad on all of the other tanks. Hey, baby. So, Nave, we've talked about the tiers and kind of the balance. How do you feel about that grind? Because in the four or five days we're playing, even on the days that me and you didn't play together, I would log in to get my daily wins. And as of today, I am still like 4,000 experience away from getting my, my tier four to a tier five. The grind is awful. It's terrible. Imagine what it's like having all the things I have. How much time have yeah, I put uh, into the world of tanks, do you think? That is insane. The grind is crazy big. I get why people have linked this to like kind of like pay to win because you can pay. I don't know if you can pay for experience, but you can. I think you can. I think you, you can, can definitely pay, pay for a free things. experience. You can 100% okay. do that. So you can just pay. This game's free to play. So they got to make money somehow. Like, I'm not going to knock them for trying to make money. Uh, you know, we beg for money every every episode pretty much. But this grind is just wildly long. Or, I don't even, not even like in-game, or in, like <laughs> assume the end tiers are even longer to grind. Probably like insane amount of grinding to go from like a tier 8 to a tier 9 or something like that. For us to spend... I don't know, like half a week or a week on me not getting a new tank for a whole week, just playing the same tank over and over again. I don't get how they can really keep some some players around, you know? I, it's addicting. It's very addicting gameplay, especially if you're super into this, like, uh, aesthetic. Like, it's all very historically accurate, even though it's kind of an arcade shooter. If this game was like a simulation, it would have way less people playing it. But the game is a lot more oh, yeah. arcade and goofy. I mean, it's not like Fortnite where fucking Spider-Man and Spartan, this is Sparta, Leonidas is running around hitting people with unicorn pickaxes, but it's still kind of goofy. There are skins for tanks and stuff, but I mean, nothing really significant. But speaking of keeping people around, uh, I have, not only did I find how many hours I've played World of Tanks, according to Xbox, but I've also found my top five 
games I've played on Xbox. Do you want to get on? You want this to be on record? How long do you think? Or do you think World of Tanks is in my top five? I don't know. World of Tanks isn't going to make it up there. Not a chance. World of Tanks is my number one. Of course, is going to be Rock Band. What's up? <clears throat> World of Tanks is number five. Oh, okay, so you That's... put a lot of time in this game. Where do you see this list? Uh, I'm using True Achievements right now, and uh, you can look okay. at your games list, and then you can sort by playtime. And it it only just it takes the data off of Xbox, so it's not even like True yeah. Achievements is doing it, but it's a convenient place. Are you gonna look at your own? Maybe because it is interesting. All right, so World of Tanks is number five. At 188 hours and 44 minutes. Whoo! You know what I mean? That's fucking quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, that's a lot. Number one is not Rock Band 4. I don't what believe it? this. It's Clicker Heroes. <laughs> oh, you just left it on. Come on. <laughs> well, it's well. this is the thing. No, Clicker Heroes plays when it's offline as well. Oh, uh, okay. So what this is, is me playing PlayStation or Wii U at the same time, or PC, you know what I mean? But I, I have it up on, I have it on, and I'm actively, like, or passively kind of doing it. But Clicker Heroes I have played for 606 hours and 36 minutes. World of, uh, World of Rock Band 4 is number two with 402 hours. Halo Master Chief Collection has 339 and a half hours. Holy yes. shit. Witcher 3 is my number 4 with 198 hours. That's insanity. That Peggle is, uh, 2 is my number 6. Insane. Really Peggle 2? Yeah, well it's game. because it's because my mom loved it and my, for a long time my mom lived with me and she would always play Peggle or uh this pinball game, but mostly she played Peggle cuz it was so flashy. But she would play it like every day at, while I was at work. I love me some Peggle. Yeah, this is cool. Did you find your list? No, I forgot I'm at war with, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, true achievements. Oh, why? What's going on? Oh, uh, well, you know, well, for one, it's like I can never log in because whenever I try to log in, it's like, hey, man, this email is already in use. And I'm like, that's a bummer. And so I'm like, well, can I just log in with my gamer tag? And they're like, no, nah, man, this gamer tag isn't associated with anything. And that's how I, I try to dog. log in through Xbox. What? I got that's you. A secret. No, I, I just looked you oh, up. You can see my stuff. And I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so your number one is Minecraft with 275 hours. Then nice. number two is Halo Master Chief Collection with 258 hours. So almost as, as much as me. I mean, it's 100 less hours, but I mean, that's a long time. But uh, <laughs> Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, 245 hours. Jesus. Smite, 210 hours. You played a lot of Smite. I played Smite for a long time. And then Fallout 4 is your... I lost track of which number I was on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so this is number 5 with 199 hours. So it seems you like played RPGs so a much Halo Infinite. Holy shit. Your Halo Infinite is number 6. Resident Evil Revelations 2, Slay the Spire, Dragon Quest 11. There it is. I was expecting oh, that to Dragon be Quest. higher. Middle Final Earth. The ladder. Right, yeah, when you talk about tanks... All right, so... What are we talking about? Yeah, the, the grind is bad. Uh, I'd expect nothing less of a free-to-play game, though. Dave, do you think this game is pay-to-win? Yes, absolutely. It's so much pay-to-win right. that so you could you could pay for premium tanks. Premium tanks are objectively better tanks that get you free experience, which is the you. So when you're playing, your tank gets its own experience towards leveling it up and then towards progressing towards the next tier, and it also gets a very tiny, like a five percent of the experience is reserved for free experience, which can be used on any tank. It's like your your leftover pool of uh, experience. Well, if in your premium tanks and in your maxed out tanks, like tanks that you've gotten everything and you c you've gotten the next tier of tank, you just like if you want to continue to play the Hetzer, it will give you free experience instead of tank experience because obviously you don't need tank experience anymore. Uh, premium tanks do not upgrade. They do not get better because they already are like peak fucking performance. They're like the alpha Chad steroid using dudes of the tank world. And since these tanks inherently give you are are better tanks and they do give you free experience, uh, that's you know that's a little problematic. That and not only that, but these tanks cost like fifty bucks. <laughs> like they are, they are very so expensive. expensive. At least like the minimum cheapest is like thirty bucks. And it only goes up from there. And those those tell. thirty buck ones are like tier fours. Like they're not big boy tank. You want if you're gonna buy a tank, you might as well fucking buy a tier nine or something 
because those tier nines it takes a while i'm i have i have hundreds of hours in this fucking game apparently and i only have a one tier seven <laughs> like that's it yeah. but that's because i've spread myself numbers. really thin yeah I spread myself really thin um on top of that you can buy ammunition now i don't know what the i don't know what the like down low like what the actual word on the street is about this game anymore so a very large point of contention in this community was premium ammunition so you could basically buy better ammunition making the game quite literally free to play or it's free to pay play to but pay to win right so yeah. if you were not buying ammunition and you're in the same tank at the same level of upgrade as another dude across the fucking street and you both shoot each other he hits you with that premium ammunition you will never win that fight no matter how much better you are at like picking out spots on his tank to shoot like that guy will freaking blitz you that's not a that is a little bit of a pun because of world of tanks blitz but anyways nobody knows what the fuck that is because that's you the mobile version right i yes it was on PC as well. I don't remember the difference. It's easier. I think there's just smaller teams. I think it was seven versus seven. Yeah, I don't think and it they exists have a, anymore. Like a more, like it almost felt like it was, they were trying to do like a League of Legends, like slim down the champion pool because there's so many yeah. tanks in this game. Oh like yeah. Maybe we can fine tune it into like a more of an esport, even though normal war- world of tanks is in fact an esport. I think the last championship, the prize pool was like three hundred thousand dollars insane i didn't even know it was an esport i mean it can be very sweaty but i mean i've never played this game sweaty i don't know if you could tell but i don't really care when i'm playing this game i just know all of these random fucking things about it i don't know why hey uh, i included the meta scores because whenever i was doing my research for this game there is a huge disparity between the critic rating and the user rating like usually they're not too far unless the studio is doing something wrong and for this, it was listed the critic rating as 80. Very high. That's very good for a game to have an 80 ranking. It's in the green. And the user score as 34, which is very low. That's pretty low for a game to have. Yeah, it's not as bad as Grand Why do you Trismo. think users rate it so low? Definitely from the free-to-play aspects and the grinding. Like, the game definitely incentivizes you to purchase uh, the in-game currency. Like, so the in-game currency is, like, gold coins or whatever, you know, just any free-to-play mobile game. What I was saying before where it's, like, you you can buy premium tanks outright. You can't purchase tanks specifically, but you can com- you can convert gold currency into free experience and then use that free experience to buy your way up a tank tree, right? So, I mean, that is... Yeah. So, no, you will have to buy the experience, and these tanks also cost silver currency, which is the generic money that you get for playing for free. You have to buy the tank that you research as well, so there's like an additional cost on that. Whenever I got my one tier seven, which was the Chinese heavy, the IS2 or the IS something, it's not worth it. Don't fucking do it. If anyone's listening and they're doing that, that's very specific. But do not go down the Chinese heavy tree. It's so fucking bad. It's awful. And I'm stuck with it. And I'm so – I regret my decision. But anyway, what was I fucking just saying? Oh, whenever I unlocked the tier seven tank, I actually did not have enough silver currency to purchase it. And so really? – I had to grind to get – I sold my tier 6 Chinese tank and then went, oh, shit, I I can't buy this. And so I had to grind for a while, and that tank is so expensive. The ammo is so expensive. The parts are so expensive. This is one thing we never touched on, but when you when the match is over, you have to repair your tank. You have to use the silver that you just got for winning or losing to fix your tank. And if, your ta- if you've lost, obviously your tank blew up, but – I mean, not obviously. You can lose if your flag is captured or something. But anyways, if your tank is damaged or blown up, you have to pay for it. And when you're at tier 7, if you get your if your tank blows up and you lose bad, you can net negative, like, by a lot. Like, you will have to pay money because of that match. And that's not good because those tanks are expensive. The ammo is expensive. Like... My tank only has 12 bullets. Like, it's fucking... Like, I use 12 <laughs> shots, and it's done. Like, I don't know what else I'm going to do in this fucking match. But um, I use high explosive rounds, obviously. But, which are way more expensive. I'm not, I fucking never want to do that. But, yeah, that's that's the whole, like, prerogative between uh, free-to-play and pay-to-win once you start getting in the higher tiers is that 
everything gets so expensive that if you are not in a, pre a premium member, which premium members get like 50% money, 50% experience, all that jazz, right? Um, you are like cursed to be in the negative once you start getting into tier six, tier seven, tier eight, maybe not tier six, but like you are always going to go negative because you will never make enough money to uh, be in the green at the end of a match unless you just fucking went to pound down during that fucking match. You know what I mean? Which is not going to be that often because if you're a fucking freemium member, then obviously you're not paying for extra ammunition. You're not fucking paying. You know, you're fighting against premium takes, yada, yada, yada. And the people who are committed enough to get to tier 8, tier 9 are people who are going to bust your balls if you're not paying attention, right? They are more likely to be the people who are paying to win, right? So yeah. that's what you're up against, and that's why – Whatever the fuck I was answering, that that is that. Whatever did I okay. answer the question? At this point, I don't remember where my question was, but this leads right into. Oh, I asked you why you think the score is so low, and I think you hit the mark pretty good. One point I uncovered in my reading of user reviews on Metacritic was Oof. this game as a whole community behind it, which of course it did, and has a large amount of clans and teams and. The big thing with the clans is this game is 15 versus 15. And so there will literally be like huge war gaming clans or not war games, world of war tanks who get together God. and, <laughs> and they have like a, they organize their own teams and they will literally just have almost like championship matches against other clans. Pretty cool. Except you need the meta tanks at that point. You need the best of the best. They got to work together. They will form up their teams. I don't know what restrictions they place on each other for like how many light, how many heavy tanks. If it's just like, you know, it's like football, like how many linemen do you really have to have in football? I mean, could I get away with having all my, all my players be linemen? Maybe. This isn't will Blood make Bowl. Win the game? I know, right? But that's what it seems like is like, that looks like almost the, the, the purest play of the game that only uh, like 1% of 1% of the whole player base are ever going to experience in this game because it's in tier tanks, like, you know, top tier 10 with crazy amount of resource requirements at that point, you haven't been playing this game for years. If you're going to be a free to player and try to make it that far. And even then, if you're taking it that seriously, if a new tank drops, you're going to want to drop the $80 to get the experience to buy that tank right then, or you're already using premium tanks in these PVP matches. I've complained before in Outriders about games being content loaded at the end where I enjoy good post-game content in my games. Like, that's always nice to have. But have the middle be worth playing too, you know? Like, don't don't make me struggle to get to the good stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think I think that kind of pushes into people who are just going to get into this game because of this episode you think maybe like what what do you what would you say to those guys because we just fucking we were talking we were mad high and then as the episode went on we've been dipping into the fucking negative right like that is about as negative i think this episode's probably gonna get i don't know i, uh, I, I didn't mean, even know i, I had like all I that, take that into my but... final words yeah are, yeah are you ready for final words or do you well, have any points left i was gonna say like for people like for people just getting into the game, this game is very casual at the low end. And you don't have to put a crazy amount of time into the game. What I would recommend is if you're going to play the game for like one or two hours a day, which is probably the optimal amount of time to just not burn out, like you can play this game a few for like an hour and a half every day, kind of like your Destiny game. You get the win of the days on all your tanks and then focus on one tank or two, one or two tanks because you know you're going to go into a game and then lose your tank and you're going to have to fall back on another tank so focus on two tanks what would you recommend like as far as tank lines philip what so you've only been on a couple oh, of lines. lines yeah okay like uh, i would German go up to destroyers. like tier four like that's the area like from tier one to tier four yeah see okay you're buying right into my final words of what i want to say so, All right, do you I want mean, to just jump into final close. words? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, up, 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 final up, words, up. whatever. Yeah, and we're back. Final words. So, <laughs> Nay, you asked me the question of what I would um, like, what I would recommend to new players coming to this game. 
And honestly, I would say don't even look at the end. I know there's some really cool looking tanks down at the end. What was it? The the Storm, the Strum Panzer, Strum Tiger? <laughs> Strum the, Tiger. Strum Tiger. Strum Tiger. Yes. Which literally, okay, so it's like a, I don't even know what to call it. It looks like a dome of this weird just dome tank. And then it has a cannon that looks like it has an oil barrel. Just like that's all the cannon is. It's just this completely round oil barrel at the end where it looks like you could fit like 15 people in this barrel of this gun like it's so huge like this thing is shooting fucking cars at people (laughs) like it looks like a fantasy gun it looks like something you'd see in world of warcraft where they're like and this is the goblin tank and they just have a giant gun for the front of the tank dude have you seen those documentaries about that nazi tank not the tank, but the Nazi artillery that they were going to build like a mile long cannon that was going to shoot fucking across the country. <laughs> and then, dude, this is real. It, it's not a mile long, but it is fucking huge. It was so huge. It had to be held up by a bunch of supports and it had to what, be brought to in on a England? railroad track. Yes. No, they were trying to shoot France, I think. They were trying to shoot like across countries. Like they were trying to. <laughs> this was before ICBMs, bro. Like they were trying to be the. They were trying to send this fucking bullet into the atmosphere and then come. Like uh, it looks like it is exactly what would come out of Germany. This this Strum Strum. Oh fuck! I forgot the gun. I forgot. Strum it's Tiger. Strum Tiger. Strum Tiger. It's a it's a tank destroyer. It, just Google it. I don't know, but okay. it's so okay. fucking yeah. funny. Don't don't look at those tanks. That's what I want to say. Is these tanks? They look so cool at tier ten, and they're like, whoa! Everything is like giant. The tanks look like some out of Halo or whatever the Storm Tiger is. And then you look over at the crappy tier one Le Tractor French tank, <laughs> which looks like a tractor with a tiny gun they mounted to the top of it, and. Honestly, that's where I had the most fun. Like, if I think back, not to this playthrough, but years past, you know, 12 years ago when we were playing this game or whatever. And I remember I would always keep the Latractor on my bench so that I could jump into a tier one game, which that is the most clown fiesta <laughs> of a game. And I like the Latractor because the gun was mounted on the very highest point of the tank. So it was like the one tier one that could look over wreckage while the other tanks really couldn't. And so you were just like driving in these wrecked like you European were on cities. <laughs> yeah. This is the tanks looks are so terrible at tier one because half the time you guys can't even penetrate each other's armor. <laughs> or you're just standing there, staring at each other, just like pinging rounds off of one another until finally one like hits the perfect spot, hits them once, and then they explode. And you're like, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> then you move along. Those early tiers are the funnest the game gets for me. I will never be a tier 10 clan leader or whatever, hosting these like games every week, grinding out my resources. So my funnest time is where the Hetzer caps out. Like the tier four is as high as you need to go in this game. Like I assume Nave enjoys his tier five tanks and whatnot, but I'm really like a tier six. That's my sweet spot. I don't have the grind. I don't have the grind mindset. Oh yeah. Well, okay. So that's that's one that's one tank we've mentioned a hundred times. So Hetzer, you got to go German tank destroyer. Hetzer's gonna Hetz. There's a meme. It's a meme for a reason. Awesome fucking tank. There's literally no reason to keep going forward after that. Um, the M3 Lee, also a very interesting uh, tank because it's a medium tank, I think, but it's it's got a fixed uh it's got a fixed gun. Right. So it's just yeah. like a tank destroyer, but it's got armor. So and the gun is very strong. Also, like once you start upgrading that gun too, that that M3 Lee can put holes in people. Like it's very interesting. Um, the Russian heavies. I don't think you get to heavy by tier four. There's very few tank. There's very few countries where you get to heavy by tier four. But whatever the line is for the KV one, that whole line is pretty fun. The American mediums are pretty fun, and the American heavies as well. The by the time you get to tier five, the heavy's not so great, but the tier four Shermans and stuff, they're awesome. Uh, or whatever is the predecessor to the Sherman, those are pretty good as well. What other countries are there? The Germans, France. the Germans have a have pretty fun scout tanks as well, but I don't really mess with them. Um, England, England scout tanks are my main ones because uh, they're so small, they're very tiny, so it, they're a little bit harder to hit. 
the Corvette or something. I think it's called like a Corvette or something like that. Yeah, scout tanks are pretty fun. So that's a pretty wide variety. Uh, as far as artillery, I have no fucking idea. That's Phillips. He, Philip was doing the birch gun. So, I mean, maybe that's the best one. The birch gun was ridiculously good. I don't know. Like, I had never used a birch gun. I think I went Chinese artillery in my previous play- playthrough. I had to start over for this one. Uh, but to finish up my final words, I do recommend this playing with friends. Playing by yourself might be kind of lonely. I definitely have problems playing this by myself because either I just drop in and die or I get a couple of kills and then I feel nothing. <laughs> so get some friends. The more you bring, obviously the, the more fun you're going to have in this. Imagine, I don't know. I just imagine like a tier one fight where you bring in like five of your bros and you're like, let's go get them boys. And you just roll down the streets and you're, crappy little latractors bouncing rounds off of each other because of course you can shoot your teammates and it doesn't hurt them. Yeah. That's, so, that's classic. World of Tanks the beginning. I would not spend money though. Well, so that's, hey, those are two different, uh, final words. Yeah. Those are two different play styles, really the, the solo and the cooperative one. And to like point back to our intro, which I didn't do. I did. I did the one I wrote, but, um, your intro, you set, you ask if games are better off playing solo, and it just depends on what you would like the experience to be. Because this game does get fun with friends, but the the experience is completely different. Whenever you're playing by yourself, it is like rapid fire, just constantly joining matches. You know what I mean? It's a very similar yeah. experience to Battle Royales, where the moment the moment that you experience failure, it's like whatever. You just bounce out of the match and go into a new one. And you're constantly seeing those numbers get higher and higher. When you're playing with friends, you don't want to leave the match. You want to switch over to their view and you want to watch them play. Unless it's Philip playing a fucking artillery, in which case it's the most boring fucking thing anything. in the world. Yeah, you're just watching him stand, sit there, and occasionally he turns a little bit. But <laughs> that's all you see. So you go and you watch a scout or something. But this is a good game if you like to just sit around and bullshit with your friends. Grab a cup of, gra- grab a glass of whiskey, start drinking, get a fucking breakfast burrito, pull your phone out and start scrolling Twitter, just bullshit with your fucking buddies, you know. And of course, the more friends you have, the more likely you can get like a war party together and like just go rampaging down the center of that map with the lake in it. Like they, I see so many people just driving like it's fucking ATV off-road fury and scout tanks just <laughs> jumping hills and stuff. Like we didn't mention the how often we would see people accidentally go off a ledge and just tip over and explode <laughs> like it's a fucking Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> like it's so it's always there's funny of, there's a lot of cliffs yeah ledges that you can fall off of. and so many times people will be aiming and they won't notice <laughs> that they're you're scooting a little bit forward and you just see them like there's one map that has a highway that goes over a, a river or i guess it's a bridge and it just like goes over this little point and it's so high off the ground and people love to go up there to snipe off of and people will just inch next to the edge a little bit too close and you just see them <laughs> flip and explode like and it's funny because they become visible yeah, they get uh, you can see him across the map when it happens because we're always <laughs> watching that bridge because we're like, we know we're going to spot someone over there, but they're all invisible until they die. Then you see their <laughs> tank carcass laying on the ground on fire. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that guy fell. Fucking fools. I guess that's my final right. words. I mean, this game, it's really, really good. And the, there's a reason why it still has a very dedicated fan base. But if you're looking for something to play competitively, this is unless you have a very deep bank account, this is not the game for you. Um, I would recommend, like I said before, focusing on one or two tanks. And if you are actually looking to get into Tier 6, Tier 7, to those really, really fucking cool tanks... Um, I would go on to like the subreddit. I'm sure there's like, I'm sure there are like uh, strategy guides to t- to different tank lines and stuff. Like what tank line, like a tank line tier list. I'm sure that exists. Uh, I would go and I would look something up like that so that you can kind of plan your strategy out because this is not a game that you want to just experiment on because you will waste a hundred hours of your life if you accidentally just decide on a fucking terrible tank line like please don't play the chinese heavy tank line i beg of you i've committed so much time to it now that i feel like i have to at least get to tier eight now but it is miserable because i am never killing anyone with that tank dude i am every match is just i hit a couple people and blow up instantly it's so awful 
Oh, I was going to ask, uh, this point came up, or I wrote this point back in the meet. Are you going to keep playing after this review? Most definitely. I, so this is the problem. When we started playing World of Tanks, as I was like, oh, it'll be fine. I forgot how much uh, reward my... You, uh, so we get, like, perks on uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And so I have just been banking these fucking... I have, like, 37 days of premium. And I'm just, like... The moment we played one match and I realized how much premium I had, I, I, I was like, fuck. I was like an alcoholic just tasting Budweiser, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, God, I feel myself getting back into the sauce. And we have to beat Elden Ring. For the love of God, we have to beat Elden Ring. So I'm going to keep playing this game probably for a month at least because – I feel like I have to use that premium because once you log in and start using it, it's it's fucking using even if you don't play. So like like I've lost a few days of premium, and even that bugs the shit out of me. Like they're it's definitely playing with my FOMO, and that sucks. That's very anti-consumer, but I ooh I can't help it. And also the game is fun, so I mean fuck it. But I mean I'm not gonna I sound like an addict right now, but I'm I'm gonna try and <laughs> control myself because I have games I need to play. World of Tanks is not a game I need to play, but it's a game that I kind of want to play. Is that good? I know what you mean. I don't know. I think I'm going to keep mine installed for a while longer. I'm probably going to pop into a game now and then, but hopefully I can get a, a tank up and maybe we can play some higher tiers. Yeah, we can keep playing World of Tanks until Halo, you know, 343 gets their fucking shit together. Where's Dude, Forge I don't mode? Know what's going on over there. I just want to yeah, grab them by their fucking cheeks time. and shake them. You know, like that Chris Farley. What? No, what is that? It's Adam Sandler in uh, Billy Madison where that fat kid says, oh, man, I wish I was grown up. And he goes, don't ever say that. And he grabs his cheeks to cherish it. You know, <laughs> he's like, cherish it. It's fucking awesome. All right. Uh, do you have anything for left for our co-op partners? People. Uh, no, I think I'm going bald, dude. I mean, your dad was bald, right? Yeah, my dad was bald. That's what freaks me out. I've always, ever since high school, I was afraid of going bald. And I've, I have really thick hair, so, but, like, man, I had a fucking full-on hairball come out of my hair when I was in the shower. Like, it was freaky. Like, I was, like, it was, like, breaking me. It was, like, breaking bad. You think it's too many monsters? You really just scared me. I don't know. Can you lose hair from Monster Energy Drink? We need to wrap this up. Thanks for joining oh us, co-op partners. Maybe I next time we can bounce some Google shells and go on a 12-game losing streak together. Next time on Gaming Together. Or just ding them. Say bye. Or something. I don't know.